All right, so in this video, we're going to be installing a McWill Sega Game Gear screen. First thing we need to do is get rid of the CFL lamp. I'm using a soldering wick to suck up the solder, but just about anything will work. If the wick isn't cooperating, just push the iron through the hole like so. This lamp is the main reason playtimes on a battery were shorter than Vanilla Ice's career. Next, we're going to prep this ribbon cable so we could separate it from the board. After getting the end of the ribbon cable to lift up for us, we can shove a glob of solder down it to break it free. Let's clean these connectors up and apply fresh solder for our install. These fuses can be set free by applying a little bit of pressure while heating each solder joint. And that's all there is to it for this LCD assembly. Let's move on and prep the rest of the board for installation. Because these directions are a dumpster fire, let's remove these components by quadrant starting off with the top left. Using a braid to remove capacitors is tedious. Since we're using a knife tip soldering iron, it can reach both legs and allow us to simply pull it out. Keeping solder on the iron tip allows us to soak up this resistor like a sponge. Time to blob this transistor the same way and pluck it from its former home. We might want to be careful when working around this contrast wheel. One slip and we're likely to melt it. And these resistors came off without a hitch. Let's just make sure to wet the iron with solder so that we can keep our pace. I'm soaking up this area to make sure the bridge to the left of the coil isn't mine. Speaking of coils, since we're in the area, let's get rid of that too. Just like the other capacitor, I'm simply heating the two legs up at once and yanking it out. There's nothing to it. This resistor is pretty tricky since it's the only one in the area that we need to remove. Let's just use the tip of the iron to persuade it to come loose. This resistor is so close to our new capacitors that it makes more sense to tackle it from the top. The last resistor on this half of the board is all alone, so it shouldn't pose a problem. Next, we have to bulldoze these four resistors to make room for our bridges. It's unfortunate that my camera is out of focus during this part, but I assure you, it was glorious. Now on to the hardest part of this installation. If someone were to do this McWill LCD mod, I strongly suggest getting the twin ASIC version to avoid this nonsense. Eesh. Look at how small these things are. It's like a flake of pepper. Ain't no way I'm soldering those with an iron. For a moment now, Feel my anguish. My misery. F*** my life. My tools just weren't pristine enough for this job, so I had to resort to capacitor legs to finagle the bridges into place. Since the bridges are roughly where we want them, let's take extra care with flux so that we don't dislodge them and make a mess. Before installing anything, we need to test VCC for 5 volts. Pin 16 wasn't working for me on this Game Gear, so let's use pin 15 instead. Due to filming issues, this wasn't caught on camera, but you should solder a jumper between the bottom of R23 to T10 like so.
All we're doing here is connecting up VCC in red and ground marked in black. At this point, we can see what happens when you don't read the directions and go off how the front of the LCD looks. If you're following along with this installation, I highly suggest you flip the LCD around so that the Mick Will logo is behind the cartridge connector. As long as your LCD is opposite of mine, this video will still apply. Here we are installing VCC power to the six pin from the bottom left. Let's also solder this black ground wire to pin 15. Next up, let's install the clock bus to the FB1 pad using this yellow wire. The directions show to install it on the lower pad, but I'm installing it on the upper one because they look bridged to me. Let's connect this white wire to SMS so we can route it to pin 42. Pin 42 is the second pin from the top left. Next, let's install our button pad starting with button one. This wire goes to the left-hand side of C37. This top pad is button 2, which goes to the right side of C38. Now let's use this white wire to install to the bottom pad for button 3. We're going to solder the other end to the bottom of C36, like so. At this point, I realize my rate of fail, but if you happen to be following along with the LCD in the correct orientation, you're still good to go. There we go. Now it's all better. Let's tackle our backlight pads next. To be honest, all the McWill videos I've seen don't have these backlight pads. This was purchased spring of 2022 so it must be a different revision. I didn't want to route another wire under the board, so I went the more direct route under the LCD. I only have six wire colors to play with, and I want to keep each function together to minimize confusion. The blue wire is positive on this backlight, while the ground is green. Now it's time to solder our last six wires from the PCB to the LCD pins. I'll be starting from the first pin, which happens to be pin nine, and incrementing each go. Some of these weren't caught on camera because of the precision involved in soldering these to an individual pin. I really had to get my head close to inspect my work, but I'll give you a close up after everything is set. A couple of pointers I'd like to give is to tin your wire with solder first, then clamp the wire on the pin you want. Once everything's in place, you can simply tap your iron on the wire and it should take. Of course, accidental bridges can be solved with flux. I get that it's easier said than done, but it helped me a ton for the last couple of wires. And no, I'm not redoing it. There's such a thing as fixing it until it's broken, and I'm good with it how it is. Since this Game Gear is modded, let's give it a new shell. If you look to the right or the bottom of the LCD screen, it isn't aligned properly. And this contrast wheel isn't responsive either. Let's nudge this LCD until we get it aligned properly. That's better. You'd figure that the most expensive LCD model on the market could afford proper directions. It clearly states pin 2 when pin 3 is the correct one. After migrating the wire from pin 2 to pin 3, we could see that our contrast wheel functions again. 
Since I'm happy with the alignment of the LCD, let's tack it to the main board so it doesn't have a chance to move around again. This method of attachment is weirder than my lithium ion conversion Game Boy. Since we've worked out all the kinks, let's permanently transfer everything to this new Game Gear shell. I purchased some colored glass covers, but I prefer the accent of the original black to be honest. And there you have it, a modded McWill Game Gear that displays an amazing picture and none of the ghosting its predecessor had. And that about does it for this video. I have to say, if you want to do this mod, I highly suggest that you obtain the twin ASIC variant due to its difficulty level. If you like this video, or if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. That's, that's interesting. What is going on there? I have never seen that. That's strange.